Good morning and welcome. This is part one of making a propeller, but before we get stuck in, I'd just like to say thank you for all the subs, likes and comments that have been made over the past few months. I try to respond to as many comments as possible. I enjoy them very much and the interaction with many of you out there. It's good fun and long may it continue. Anyway, thank you, let's get stuck in. The first thing to do before starting on the propeller proper is to sort out somewhere to make it. The workbenches I've got are not really suitable for wood carving. The one in the machine shop is small. It's great for going hacksawing and bludgeoning away at things with a hammer, but not really for working what's going to be a five foot long propeller. Anyway, in the hedge at our old house was a chaff cutter. It's one of these ancient Victorian devices used for cutting up hay and straw into small lengths to be mixed with animal feed through the winter, and at the same time for maiming farm workers who weren't quick enough to get their hands out of the way. So I made a sturdy workbench out of the wrought iron frame. My father had the pulley and flywheel as a garden ornament, and the rest of it went back in the hedge. So the bench is very sturdy, it weighs a ton. I'm going to drill a hole there so I can put a length of studding through, and that way I can bolt the propeller blank down and work on it with any tools I care to use. And so to the book. This book is still readily available, even though dear old Eric has now passed away. So a quick Google will find you a copy. It's not very expensive. And if you're interested in propellers and how they're made and all the rest of it, it's a really interesting book and sort of well worth the money. There's all manner of stuff in it, including design considerations. But fortunately, we don't need to worry about that. This book was written over 40 years ago at a time when turning to page three was generally guaranteed to reveal a couple of decent pointers. Eric doesn't let us down. Just over halfway down the page, it says, by far the best way of designing a prop is to copy one that has been used successfully in a similar application. He then goes on to give a table of all manner of other propellers. The Hilson Praga isn't included amongst that. No surprise really. But the 1953 ARB notes do list the Hilson Praga. There's two propeller types, Diameter is shown on the left, pitch on the right, both in feet. Compared to the Aronka, the pitch on the Praga propellers seems very coarse. 3.28 is somewhere near a metre. Although, of course, the Praga isn't strung with lots of strings, so it might be a bit faster. Then I had an idea. You'll recall Mr. Harold Brook. He flew this aeroplane from London to Cape Town in 1936. The aircraft disappeared years ago, but the engine propeller survived with a friend of mine in Pretoria. I wired him, and by the wonders of the modern world, he sent me these photographs of the propeller and the detail that's stamped on the blades. It's a very fine looking Czechoslovakian propeller, and all the detail is recorded in metric rather than imperial. The upper figure says P, Proma, 1600, that's 63 inches or 5.25 feet. The middle figure is Sloneni, 1000 or 1 meter, that's 3.28 feet or 39.36 inches. What tremendous luck, my pattern propeller was once 63 inches diameter too. Having settled on a pitch and diameter, we can now work on producing a template for the propeller blank. I like this old Chris Lodge propeller. It was actually rather good on the Aronka and uh, it worked well. But one of the odd things about it was he wasn't able to produce the slightly thinner um, hub that is normally used on the Aronka propeller. So I had to use longer bolts. Now this is actually rather fortunate because if we take the Praga hub, slip it on, and take a Praga propeller bolt, notice actually the Praga bolts are naturally a little bit longer. That's a Praga one on the right, a Ronka on the left. But if we poke one of the uh, Praga bolts through, by the time it's got its face plate on, wherever that is, here we go and a nut and a washer, those bolts are almost the perfect length for this propeller. And I like the shape of this propeller too. Obviously it's got a broken tip, but we can just draw that in. So I think that propeller is very suitable to be copied. Now, of course, you might think we've only got one blade, but of course, any propeller manufacturer, if you watch Elena at Culver Propellers, and who wouldn't want to watch Elena at Culver Propellers? She produces all her blades from a one blade master because you want both blades to be exactly the same. So you want two copies of the same blade 
not one copy of a complete propeller. I hope that makes some sense. The template we want to produce is in plan form, so in this direction. And it's useful in two ways. Firstly, in form marking out the blank to be bandsawed once all the planks are glued together. And secondly, so we can mark off 10% increments and develop the aerofoil section on paper before marking up the blank to be carved. Having now produced a rough template, in my case really quite rough, I can mark up the centre line, which is going to be there, and somewhere up here, again it doesn't actually have to be exact, the reason for having a centre line is for when we mark up the laminated blank itself, so that's three and a half, one and three quarters, makes the centre line there. Join those two together. I can now pencil in this line as well. The reason for using the square was to make sure that the uh, pencil marks are, are vertical from the, the propeller pattern, so I'm going to run it through the bandsaw. The main thing is not to go inside the line, it doesn't matter if I, I'm outside the line a bit. The point with the bandsaw is, is to be outside of everything. You can always take more wood off. It's all a bit wiggly there because that's where the leading edge is dented in. Surprised if I fell from two and a half thousand feet, I'd probably be slightly dented in too. So that's good enough. Now we know the diameter of the original Praga propeller was 1600. So I'm actually going to mark off, mark off halfway there. So I mark the middle of the diameter of the hole there. Then a measurement from there should be 800. So, put 900 on there, mark off at the 100 point here. The end of the ruler is slightly bashed in, and I can just double check that. 800, so that's our tip. That's ready for band sawing.
the template can now be marked up with the 10% increments. So again, because we know it's 800 millimeters, I wouldn't normally work in metric, but it's actually rather useful because it's every 80 millimeters, 80, 160, 240, etc. I won't demonstrate that I know my times tables, but it's actually rather useful in itself. Now somewhere I've got a small sort of school uh, set, a geometry set, but I can't find it. I could only find the protractor. However, these hotel key cards, which I get far too many, are really good because they're, and I have checked this with a, with a uh, 90 degree square, they are cut absolutely square. So they make very useful small set squares. So I'm just going to mark each line up, and then we're going to draw the line right across the template. I've already marked this up with leading edge written on it, just for clarity. Now what I'm going to do is measure the distance of each of these percentage marks. I could actually give them all a number as well. So 10, 20, 30 onwards. I don't think I need to write tip on it. I think that's from the Ministry of the Bleeding Obvious. Right, let's measure the length and write it on the Blank. I'll do it all in metric because it's started in metric. template is complete and that's enough information now for me to prepare the drawings for each of the 10% segments. So I'll reveal those in the next episode because I haven't done them yet. In the next episode we're going to glue up a blank. Now this prop is three inches thick I believe. Let's just double check with the calipers. Yeah, as near as damn it three inches. So the plan will be to head off on a bit of a road trip there's a very good wood yard in Exeter. I'm hoping to go and buy some Douglas fir there. And then we'll get it plain to size, glued up, marked out. I'll show you how the drawings go. And we'll start carving the propeller. I've got to indulge in that ridiculous sport of putting a pair of planks on my feet and roaring down a mountain for a week. And then I've got some work to do. I'll see you in a couple of weeks or so. Thanks for watching.